Okay. Um, so yeah, today we're just going to have a simpler video. We're going to be talking about the um, balance patch that's incoming and, and how it's going to change certain units. I've already seen these ones through, but I haven't seen them at my own pace and, and kind of breaking them down. I've just kind of seen... Um, mainly I know these units are getting a buff and the one that stood out to me most is uh, Blood, Blood Blade Karen, so BBK. Uh, Yuffie kind of stood out to me a little bit too um, in terms of like... Cause I I have Yufin. She's kind of she's six starred and, and kind of built, but she's like just there. She's not really useful. Uh, Mediator Kaurik, I didn't pay too much attention to because I don't have him. And um, if I fight against him, it's not that big a deal because I don't run a lot of debuffers anyways. It's not like yeah. So I don't have him, so I don't need to use him. And then people, I don't care if they use him against me because I'm not gonna use a unit that he's good against, right? So there you go. Um, Carmen Rose is probably just gonna be as crap as she always was, just because all those like. All the Banshee specialty changes were just kind of a waste of a specialty change, if you ask me. Because uh, they're not even, like... The thing about... So, it's like, okay, these are good against, like, Wyvern, if, you know, the water one, or, you know, her, she's good against uh, the Golem, right? Because she's fire. So, you have these things going on, um, and they're good against that, but it's like... You have to realize that you kind of want to, like, invest in units that are both good against the, like, you know, that Wyvern, if you're fighting as Wyvern, and good in general, right? So, if you invest in some something like, um, what's her name? Uh, Sigret, right? Sigret's good against the Wyvern, but she's also good against, like, just everything in general, right? She can just wipe out a few units. Now, she's not one of the best, but, like, if you see, like, certain tier list, she's going to be up there decently high, because she can do something other people can't do. But, you know, that's, that's one side. It's, like, not that big a deal. Um, but anyway, yeah, like I said, so those those like specific specialty changes are kind of a waste of a specialty change in my opinion because they don't really do very much. It's like, hey, this person is now super tuned to this slot and like you want to be investing in units that do double duty anyway, right? Like, I don't know. It's really weird. But anyway, um, yeah, then we got these two down here, which are pretty interesting. So uh, we'll go. Actually, is Shepherds of Chaos? Uh, let's see. I don't remember. Shippers of Chaos. Shepherds. Shepherd of Chaos, Epic 7, yeah. What is this artifact? Oh, okay, I remember. What the, yeah, no, that's stupid. Okay, never mind. I remember, I remember exactly what it is now. Uh, so let's take a look here. So Calric is uh, Retribution. Okay, so he, he just gives himself the 10% attack, uh, the 10%... Um, boost as well yeah because before you used to just give it to someone else yeah of the ally except for the caster with the highest combat readiness yep um that's kind of interesting it's weird how they worded this like they put the increased combat readiness like twice um they could have just said them and in, in that but anyway um there's already some people who are kind of complaining not complaining but like they're pointing out that cowork's actually are pretty strong um so this is just going to make them a little better um People can stop complaining about how Calric's mediocre, um, but they're still going to because he kind of like he just doesn't stand out very much. It's like, you know, um, so when you find one that's like really well geared, he's gonna stick out more because you kind of thought he was useless, and then you fight against him, he's well geared, and then, well, it turns out he wasn't as useless as you thought. Um, so then you know you get stomped on him and whatever, right? So that's kind of what people are not like realizing is that a lot of times it's selection bias where it's like, you went in assuming he was useless, he turned out to not be useless. Uh, then you get stomped out, and it's just like you remember the, that instance more than anything else, right? Uh, but yeah, this will just make him better. Um, more combat readiness is always a good thing. Um, now he's he's splitting it between both. Like he's, you're getting it to your actual damage dealers, and you're giving it to yourself as well. Um, so this this attack, this is what we I think a lot of us had had mentioned this when he came out was like decreases attack was kind of dumb because it doesn't do anything, um, and he gives a barrier to everyone. So that the barrier was fine, but like. Uh, the decrease attack didn't really do much, but now that he strips, dispelling all buffs, so that's pretty crazy. He dispels like all buffs. There's not like because a lot of them like take even the new unit that came out. He doesn't dispel all buffs. He dispels like um, two only. So uh, the all buffs is kind of interesting. It's weird that they gave him a dispel. We're not gonna like the thing is is decrease attack is useful on damage dealers. And damage dealers don't have a lot of effect resistance, so you're gonna probably hit them with the strip and then the attack decrease most of the time. Whereas like a tank is not going to get, maybe he's not going to get stripped or something, but it doesn't really matter because you weren't trying to land the uh, decrease attack on him anyway. Uh, but this is also getting kind of interesting to the point where like, they're just giving strips to people randomly. Like now just like this guy has a strip, right? It's like, 
his debuffs didn't mean anything. They were just a waste of time. Um, but now we're just going to give him more um, more stuff, right? So I don't know. It's just weird to me anyway. Um, but yeah, so it's, I think it's a single target attack. So we're getting more damage and the barrier increase. So that's kind of whatever again. Um, and then lastly is the... This is actually a pretty interesting change. So um, dispels all debuffs from all allies granting attack and immunity. The attack, again, as, as a lot of people have mentioned who use him and who have fought against a decently built Kalrick, the attack buff is actually pretty dangerous is what like why people underestimate they underestimate how strong giving like your team an attack buff is um so that that's still the same um while dispelling everything combat readiness of the caster by 50 percent. that's actually pretty good um because then he'll probably like because you want him fast usually so he'll probably go and then hit somebody um with this uh and then that's one of their damage dealers kind of taken out not like you know they're not dead or nothing but um, it, it's decently, um, they've been affected to some degree. Uh, and then when the skill is available at the start of the turn, decreases debuff duration of the caster f by one turn. So stun, so basically you can't stun him. He doesn't get silenced by, um, that's actually pretty strong because now you can run him with less effective resistance because now he won't get stunned by like stunners. He won't get hit by, um, what's her name? At new angelica's uh silence because it's only one turn so when it comes to his turn it'll take it away and then he'll be able to just s3 so you can build less effect resistance on him is basically the point for the first turn cleanse uh because yeah it does that it does that uh like it like I says does stuns uh that silence that turn one silence uh who was the other one that i was thinking um like sleeps are usually one turn but sometimes they're two turns because they can just get woken up um I'm, I'm like drawing a blank here there's one that specifically you don't want to get hit oh um f10a's um taunt thing right her aoe taunt is one turn as well i think actually let's go take a look at that uh epic seven i should leave i, should, I need to just leave a google tab open epic seven fairy tale tenebria okay let's go take a look at this yeah so i think that she is going to have a one turn yeah provoke for one turn right so th these are like all the like the main debuffers out there their most significant debuff is going to be like that one controlling debuff which is either a stun a silence or a, or a provoke or something like that and those are just they're only one turn so he's going to get rid of those anyway so that's actually pretty good um i don't think i mean basically just makes him better than most other units right because now he basically does what like uh what's her name is um made chloe he does what made chloe does where a lot of people are building her with like high effect resistance and trying to make sure she you know survives and does whatever like he's basically doing that without having to run any effect resistance now you kind of want some on him right but like i don't know it's just to me it's like you know it's important to realize that it's not that big a deal anymore you're not like fighting directly against someone else's effectiveness like they have like 300 effectiveness doesn't care you can land them on me when it's my turn i'm gonna remove one and then i'll be able to go right so that's pretty interesting um this will probably this is like the biggest change to him. I think they could have just done this and he would have been fine. Um, these other things are pretty nice, I think. But I think you know, stay on the lookout because people who are going to use Cowork are going to use him a lot more now, just because there's no. The thing about him is you can prevent him from doing the cleanse and then make him useless if you have enough effect resist effectiveness. Um, but now it's not a gear depend. It's not a gear check, right? So it's like if you go up against New Andrew, it's a gear check. Do you have enough effect resistance to deal with her debuffs? Um, if you do, then you won basically, you didn't win, but like, you know what I mean? Like it makes it easier because now your whole team is cleansed and you don't have to worry about debuffs for a while. Uh, but if you lost the effectiveness check, basically Calric is useless and there you go. But now that effectiveness check is no longer relevant. Like, yeah, so that's pretty cool. I think, uh, I think that made him pretty decent. Um, if I were, I mean, I, I didn't, I was, I, I don't know if I was going to make a video on, on ML Calric. The only, when I make videos like like the Dilibet one, it's mainly just like I use them, so I kind of have experience with them. Um, so I was like, oh, this is, this would be pretty good, I think, and this would you know, be pretty, pretty balanced. But uh, with Kyle Rick, I don't know if I was going to make a video on him just because I don't have him and I don't use him. Um, so there you go. Oh, uh, yeah, so, you know, keep a lookout for Kyle Rick. I think he's going to be, uh, we're going to start seeing a lot, him a lot more. Um, so we, let's take a look down here. So we've got Edda. Now, Edda's main thing was just a bunch of random, like, CC stuff, and it, and it was really random. So, like, if we look here, she used to have unhealable, um, dispelling one buff, 
decreases combat readiness kind of randomly and then or haphazardly. Uh, so you shuffle up the order and then uh, just like some stunning here. So it was just kind of like she wasn't a stun bot, but she had stuns. She wasn't like a CR manipulator because she only had one skill and it kind of randomized everything. And it was just kind of weird, right? Uh, so let's kind of see. I, I remember they kind of changed a few things. So they took off the unhealable because it was useless uh, and then gave her a um, decreased defense, which is that's fine. Um, you know, there you go. They're more usable. Attacks all enemies with the explosion of ice, dispelling two buffs before decreasing combat readiness by a random amount. So this is actually pretty good. Um, we're getting 10% here and 20% at the end. So at minimum, they're losing 15%, which is 5% off of max before, right? And they took the crit thing, which was dumb. Uh, critical hit rate. Oh, no, okay. They just added... Okay, I'm, I'm dumb. They just added the 10% on there. They actually gave you 10% more on the, on the other one because... Uh, at minimum, they're taking five, and then they get ten more. It's fifteen. So here's the fifteen is still here, but at the top end, we're actually gaining an entire like ten more percent, which is pretty crazy. And she gets skill nullifier. So there you go. I mean, what else do you want? Turn one, you activate this, and it, you're probably gonna run her on book. So she's gonna take her next thing, and then uh, do whatever she wants after that. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm actually liking her a little more. But again, it goes back to the same thing I was talking about earlier with Calric was like, hey, these units that debuff, these debuffs are useless. Well, how do we fix that? Let's give a strip to everyone. So now basically every unit in the game is running around with strips. I I mean, I don't know. You can say it's power creep and, you know, I guess you know, everyone is probably going to say it's power creep and whatnot. But like, it just, I don't know. It's just lazy design as always. Um, I'm not sure... Uh, yeah, hold on. I'll be right back. Oh, I didn't actually pause it, so you guys heard it like just me moving around. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's strange. Um, we're getting into a point where like, like it just makes me wonder, like what is the point of immunity if most of these people are just going to be stripped into their debuffs? Like immunity is always going to be useful, but I don't know. I just, it's, it's odd. Uh, but anyway, Etta, no one's using Etta. I think she's might get a little more use given um, given these buffs. But nobody pulled for her when she came out, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so first turn, she gets an extra skill uh, after she she strips, reduces, so basically like Basar. Um, she can't soul burn for whatever, but like still you know, stripping two buffs and combat readiness reduction, and then she gets to do this on top of that. So. Uh, common readiness of all allies according to a number of critical hits made. That's dumb. Uh, so basically, we have 85% chance to stun, which is slightly better than Basar. The unbuffable is like strangely just really powerful, but um, increases combat readiness of all allies by 20%. That's pretty good because before that was the max, right? So they're basically just saying they're pretending like you crit all four units and then they're just giving that to you. Uh, when an ally using a non attack skill and the skill is available, that's actually pretty interesting. Um, I kind of think you still want to build her like to, you know, you want to build her fast, um, because this, so she, you kind of want to build her to be like the first turn, like basically just like a Basar. Um, now granted that gear is probably better, um, used on Basar. Um, but she's still, I think she's still going to do something kind of similar where it's like, you just reduce combat readiness, you strip them. Uh, and then in this case you actually, you know, you might stun a few more because Basar, you run on a, on a on abyssal crown and he's going to stun like one or two, but here you're you've got an eighty five percent chance, um, and then on top of that, so you're reducing at minimum you're reducing everybody by um, fifteen and you're giving yourself uh, twenty, so that's a thirty five percent swing, whereas like with Basar it's basically fifty or thirty right because you drop Basar reduces your combat readiness by thirty uh, percent, so she's already just better at Basar. The only thing is again she cannot. Um, soul burn for a hundred percent. On top of the fact that while Basar is still gonna get like kind of not destroyed, but like affected by um, Violet, which you know we have to kind of bring up Violet every time we talk these days because Violet's um, like one of the stronger units out there. Um, yeah, so if you're gonna cleave or do anything, like Violet's always in the conversation, and you know this is not really good for that because she's a water, right? So she's not gonna replace Basar, but she's looking like. Uh, a spicy alternative to Basar, but unfortunately, again, like we said, she's hard countered by Violet. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, giving everyone twenty percent combat readiness is pretty good in case, like the the com like if they resist the combat readiness reduction over here, you have a backup by pushing everyone up forward. 
And if you're running her with like, um, what's her name? Uh, Seaside Iceria, that's another like 15% from that, right? So you're basically going to take first turn as long as she goes or something. Uh, so that's kind of interesting to think about. Uh, and then, you know, like, there you go. So I think she's going to be used a little more, but the problem is no one had her, no one pulled for her. And the few people that did her, I don't know if they're going to build her. Um, and I don't know if they have the, the resources to like make her good enough to be like, oh, you know, she's in the meta now. So I think she's worth keeping an eye on. It's not great, but it's still like pretty good. Uh, hits the enemy with the finishing blow, dispelling all buffs. So this is her S3. Um, oh, we don't have to look at the top one. Look at the bottom one. So all she's getting is an S3 buff, which is kind of interesting. Um, hits the enemy, increases, yeah, when the enemy's buffed. Okay, so the Soul Burn used to give an extra turn, and then she would go S3 into S2, and the S2 was kind of useless after that because... You should have killed somebody, and then she has attack buff, and it's just like, what do I want the attack buff if I just use the S3, right? Um, so the the extra turn was kind of whatever, but we'll see what that changes to. I'm not like focusing on it right now, but the increased effectiveness is. I feel like they're trying to push you to use her more like a bruiser with this effectiveness thing. Extended duration of buffs granted by this skill by one turn and grants an extra turn. Okay, well there you go. Now again, it still has the same problem as before, where it's like, oh, so you're just supposed to go S3 into S2. Um, but that's not really that big a deal because sure you get 50% effectiveness now from this buff uh, But you needed the attack buff for the s3, right? So that's kind of what it, whatever it is, but it's 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 a it's a buff basically right what I'm saying is This isn't a nerf in any way and it's only gonna help her but is it gonna make her relevant or anything? I'm I really don't think so. I think what we're gonna the, the thing we're gonna start seeing is a um, We're gonna start seeing her as a more of a bruiser um, so she can come in and she can uh, strip she can hit someone really hard with the s3 if they got a if they got a um, If they got a buff on the other thing uh, That we're looking at here is you probably want to build some effectiveness on her because she does dispel and stun on the s1 But again, this kind of goes back to what I was saying last time with like, you know effective or not. What is it? Um, kind of just doing how, how did I phrase it? I had a, I phrased it properly last time. But anyway, the the thing I'm having a problem with is like the second half of the skill damage dealt increases by 50% when the enemy is buffed. Okay, that's fine. So she's supposed to be a nuker. But then the first half says dispels all buffs and stuns for one turn. The thing I want to point out is that it's like, okay, this is designed to kill someone. But if it doesn't, here's the stun and the and the buff and the and the um, the buff removal, like. I don't know. I just it, it doesn't really like sit well with me that design, right? If she's gonna be a nuker, make her a nuker, and if she's gonna be like you know crowd control, make her crowd control, right? Um, having both on one is just kind of dumb because I don't know. It just kind of like yeah, I don't know. That's just me. Um, you're kind of an opportunity cost here. Like you could give her something else to help her secure the one shot. Um, and if you're not, if the skill isn't here to one shot, give her more like you know have this do something else, right? Or even give her the effectiveness before she goes, right? There's a lot of units we have now that before they take their S3 or whatever, they get a free attack buff. Why didn't you just give her the free effectiveness buff so that she can land the dispels and the stun before, you know, whatever, right? So that's kind of my, my main gripe is like this weird, like, they don't, f the, the, the two effects of the skills don't flow with each other, right? Because what's the point of stunning and dispelling everything if he's going to die, if the unit you're attacking is going to die? And if they're not going to die, then why did you bring her, right? If I wanted to strip and stun someone, I would have brought something else, right? So it's, it's kind of, you know, like I said, they're, they're, they, they clash really hard, and it's not something that really makes a whole lot of sense. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Um, the, the thing gives her the, um, the you, you soul burn, you get the extra turn, you strip the buffs uh, with the S2 because she has effectiveness increased now. Um, so I think she'll be fine. Um, like I said, I'll probably just try, to, I'll try her out at some point as like a bruiser. Because uh, you can sacrifice, like, it's important to realize how much damage you're getting from the 50% 50, 50 from here, from this, the 50% death pen. Um, it's hard to underestimate how how high that is um, in terms of just raw damage output. Um, but the problem is, she's for one, she's green and she's hardly, she's highly single target, which means she's competing against Violet. Uh, and then she also, she also kind of, uh, what's the word? She punishes people for running buffs. Uh, who else, who does that sound like? Landy, right? So she's competing with Landy. So there you go. I mean, there's another unit kind of clashing with like the meta these days. So I don't know. This probably isn't going to help her very much. It's just kind of a weird buff 
I don't know why they decided to give her a buff uh, and then just not have just half-assed a buff, but there you go. Uh, so BBK is the one I was actually pretty interested in. Um, Cutler, where is it? Sequential Cutter. Strikes, Sword. Yeah, okay, so, for, so her S1... Oh, I forgot they had given her this part here. This is why I was confused. So if she kills somebody with the S1, she gets 50% combat variance. That's kind of weird. Yeah, that's kind of odd. So quickly strikes the enemy with a sword, recovering health proportion of the damage dealt. So, you know, she has lifesteal on the S... On the S1. Yeah. So, there you go. That's fine. Uh, they reduced how much combat readiness you get. But I think... So, I think... Yeah, so she gets less, obviously. She only gets 15% when she hits with the S1. But now something else happens. Oh, okay. So it's all 50. So you get 50 when you kill someone. But no matter what, you're going to get 15 that's kind of that's all right. Um, yeah, there, there's no. It's you know, it's just a buff. It's hundred percent a buff. It's like you get combat readiness now when you don't kill someone, so that's cool. Uh, down here, this is what's like the most interesting thing. She starts off with immortality, which is pretty crazy because now she just can't die, and no matter what, you're gonna get hit by the S three at some point, right? Because um, before it's like you know, one of the problems with a lot of damage dealers is like Karin, like Bloodblade Karin, is that when it's like she can't take her turn. Because she's going to die before she gets to S3, right? So that's kind of what um, they're, they're mitigating with this. And actually, this is a pretty good... It's one of the reasons why k is so strong, right? Is because you're going to eat an S3 at some point, right? Now, you can kind of bring in like a, a Basar or something just like to, to strip him and, and buff block him. Um, and then he won't get the immortality, whatever. Uh, hers the same way. She's going to start off with the immortality. If you strip that, then she'll die. But in certain situations, like, it's going to be hard to deal with that. Um, you're just going to take an S3 to the face, and that's it. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, I kind of like that, this buff, uh, more than all the other ones. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. So let's kind of take a look at what the other one is here, the last buff. Uh, attacks all enemies, sacrificing 20% of caster's health, and increases attack of the caster for two turns. So this is only going to affect... So this isn't going to give her... Again, this is... A, another annoying thing it's like okay so her s3 hits everyone then gets the attack buff but it's like i needed the attack buff for the s3 i don't know why you're giving it to me afterwards but you know whatever it is what it is uh grants the caster an extra turn when enemy is defeated the skill cannot trigger a counterattack. and this is the other thing that's also very valuable is the idea that um she won't get counterattacked. which you know given the the, the meta we're in uh people like her are going to be very valuable um to deal with all the like just random uh countering especially now that we know a counter sets 30 percent right um yeah i think she's pretty good overall i, I it does make me wonder what people are going to run her on now because i i think personally i'm probably going to run her on a counter set build i mean i know um uh, i know that's kind of rote at this point or, or overdone i guess you could say is, is a, it's a better way of saying it rather than pulling out some weird um ap english uh word but yeah it's a little overdone at this point um running counter set on everything but i think it's going to be pretty good on her because if they hit her and she counters, she's going to move up further a little bit with this. And then you can make sure she just doesn't die on turn one. Um, or you could just build her full damage, right? Build her full damage, she won't die. Um, and then you're going to just get a huge S3 nuke off. Um, so I don't know. I mean, either way, I think you'll be fine. Uh, I'm going to try her out. I guess I don't have a. I don't know if I have a counter set lying around just to give her. But I'll probably try her on a um, just full DPS set and see what happens. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think she's looking pretty good. Um if you want, like, that's kind of like, um, that's kind of capitalizing on the S3, on the S2 here, right? It's kind of doing this, just making sure we're, we're taking advantage of the immortality. Um, I think what would have been cool is if, like, Cal, like, uh, yeah, like, what's the name? Yeah, just regular Cal, uh, no, it's not Cal, Kron, there we go. Like Kron, if there was some way to extend this immortality an extra turn or something, like if she kills somebody, that'd be pretty cool, but I think she's going to start encroaching on the Charon's territory if they if they had added that into her. But as she's now, I think she's fine. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really all there is to it. Uh, I think that we're going to start seeing, like, on defense, like, a, a, a few units and then just having her there because she won't die. Um, and then she's going to come in and just, like, nuke as much, like, as hard as she can. She, I think she might be a little stronger on Guild War defense um, just because it's, like, if you run her with a certain comp, they're going to have a hard time dealing with the other two units you're running. And then now they have to worry about getting hit with, a S3, with an S3 from her. Now you could just take someone and just like stun her. 
stun her because you're not going to run any effectiveness, right? But like, you know, that's why you got to plan your team around that. Uh, but having a unit that's not going to die and it's going to deliver a huge blow, I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons why RB is so good on defense, right? Because um, he, no matter what, like you can either, you can kill him and you're going to take an S3 or you can not kill him and you're going to take an S3 anyway, right? Uh, of course, you can CC him, but that's like the same for every unit, right? Like every unit in the game, you have to realize that like, oh, or like a high damage dealers basically, right? It's like, oh man, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Strays is going to come in and S3 one of my nukes or you could just CC him. Right, so that's a, that's an important thing to realize. Um, CC is kind of answer to a lot of stuff, but if they if you if you can figure out a way to like mitigate that, then I think she's gonna be really strong. Uh, but she, I don't know, she looks a lot of fun to me. Uh, I'm just probably gonna skip over this person because I really don't care. Um, the last two things we're gonna look at here, I've already taken way too long. It was supposed to be like a 15 minute video. I'm already like half an hour again. Uh, Black Hand of the Goddess, basically. Okay, so we're going. We start off with 24 percent. And we only lose, we only go down to 18. So we're losing six, which to me, so here's here's my problem. If you're gonna, if like, okay, so the original problem was like, this thing ramped down too fast and we went all the way down to 50, per, 50 half of what the effect was, right? We went down to half of this. My question is, why don't you just take this whole thing off if you realize that this is just a waste of time and you're like making this artifact useless with this text? Because... The fact that they they reduced how fast, how quickly it ramps down, and then they, not only that, right, because now it, it goes down slower, right? It takes longer to get to the minimum that this is providing. So they cut that in half, and then they increase this to you, now you're only uh, losing 6%, right? A fourth of it, where before it was half. So you they recognize this is the problem, but they won't get rid of it. Even if this was like this, nobody would use this. Nobody cares. Like, it's not, I don't know. That's just my my way of looking at it. It's just like, there's no, like, mages are too, they're too hybrid, right? There's not a whole lot of straight up, this mage is here to nuke. I would rather just use someone else, like Arby, the new Bloodblade Karen, um, like Strays, or just, like, having humongous damage where this is going to be useful is usually a Thief's job or, like, a Warrior's job where you're going to have a lot of extra damage. Um, the reason, if we look at mages, what are the best mage artifacts? Um, uh, Abyssal Crown, uh Etika Scepter, well, on some units, right? Um, Spirit's Breath on New Angie. Um, Taga Hells, that gives you extra souls because taking extra turns or just doing a bunch of soul burns is way better than, like, whatever that one specific unit is going to do. Because not only, like, the thing with the soul burns is not only can that unit use them, all your units can use them. So the Taga Hells benefits the entire team rather than just one person. Um, what was the other one? Ayala's Violin. Like, all of these are utility-based because we don't have any mages in the game that are just straight-up damage mages and the ones that are straight up damage mages aren't really good, right? We have things like, um, what's his name? Uh, Ludwig. We have things like, I can't even remember the other ones. The other, like all the, all the decent like mages in the game right now. Oh, uh, what's her name? Um, I forgot her name already. Spectre Tenebria, but she's too good with the, uh, with the, with the tag of hells. Um, but like all these units, like we don't have, you know, you know, there you go. It's just the same thing. It goes back to the argument of like, Here's a damage artifact for mages, but it's like, no one's running damage mages. Like, no one cares. Like, the reason people are running Spectre Tenebria is because she can take that extra turn and basically double the damage, where this is just going to give me, like, 24% more on the crit damage, right? Like, who cares? <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, I don't know. It's just, this artifact is, in and of itself, is kind of was a bad idea to begin with. Um, it might be good on Calric, but, you know, other than him, like, who cares? Like, again, Calric is another example. Wait, is he? I think he's a mage, right? Yeah, he's a mage. Ugh. And I lasted out that Google that I had said I needed to uh, keep it up. Um, Epic 7, let's do Calric. Um, regular, yeah, regular Calric. Calric. Yeah, he's a mage, right? So, like, you know, there's a reason you don't see him anywhere. Because there's, like, I'd, you would rather just use anyone else. Like, honestly. Um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, Shepherds of Chaos is whatever, uh, ten percent increase, and then as health decreases, evasion and and defense increase by forty percent. Like, uh, no one's gonna use this. No one cares. Um, if your health is low enough to get the max use out of this, out of these two, like you're gonna die. Like, it's yeah. I don't know. I don't like like this is this is the same reason no one uses that. Uh, what's that fist artifact? The uh, Elf fist. By the time like you're getting max use out of the artifact. 
it's basically useless. Like, it's not doing anything. Like, you're going to die before you get the benefits of increased speed and attack or something like that, right? The reason Sigurd Scythe is so good is because once you get below 50, you you have, you run it on units that can just heal all the way back up again. So things like Rem, things like um, uh, LQC, things like Strays. Oh, some people run on Strays. I mean, Strays is still kind of up in the air. A lot of people are kind of assuming Strays is the best build right now. It's just 240 speed and just as much damage as you can, no survivability. But I think we're going to see some changes going forward. Uh, but you got things like uh, ML Ken uses it, right? Because he can capitalize. He's under 15. He just like boosts all the way back up to 100. Um, so yeah, these artifacts that are like, as your health goes down, this increases. It doesn't matter. By the time you get max use out of it, you're already close to death and you're just going to die. Like there's no, there's no more than that. So I think out of all these uh, buffs we got, Calric is going to be pretty impressive because... I mean, do you do I think you should run zero effect resistance on him? No, I don't think that's the case. I don't think you should do that. But I definitely think that he's going to be a lot stronger um, because you know it doesn't come down to like, am I going to win a gear check against this person because he has higher uh, effect resistance than I do or effectiveness than my effect resistance, right? So I think that that makes him a lot better, a lot more consistent. And the other buffs that they gave him are also just uh, really useful. Uh, Etta, I think she's going to get a lot stronger now just because her kit was so just like. It was just so disorganized before. It was just a mess. I don't understand who built this unit, but they didn't, didn't actually don't... I don't think they know how to play the game very well. But whoever uh, made these updates to her, actually, you know, I think that person actually plays the game and actually understands that, like, hey, this unit looks pretty good now. And they left, it, they left her in a good place. So she's good. Time will tell if she's um, going to be, like, Basar levels of strong, though Basar has fallen off, but that's mainly because, like we said, there's a lot of, like... Because New Angie's come out and we have to deal with the debuffs that she can spread, Basar kind of fell off because... Um, People are preparing for something much stronger than Basar, right? Well, that doesn't mean Basar is weak or anything. Um, and there's a lot of people counterattacking and whatnot, so it's like, you know. Uh, and then Yufin, uh, she got buffed, but, like, for what reason? No one's going to use her, and, like, she's been out of the meta since forever, so I don't know. Uh, Blood Raid Karen actually looks pretty good. Um, like I said, she's going to be kind of like... I feel like she's going to be kind of like a, a different Basar... A different um, Kron. Uh, like just a dark Charon that is more easily accessible than he is, because she's definitely probably going to be well. I can, you know, th there you go. I was catching myself. Definitely, probably right. Um, but I think she's definitely going to be better than Sven at least. Um, though I guess the 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 exchange is like if they strip right, like if you're running someone like Charon and let's say you bring a strip, if you strip him on the first turn. That's fine, right? He still has immortality because the immortality only kicks in when he's about to die. So someone has to hit him really hard. Her, if they strip her on the first turn, she's her immortality is gone, and then someone's going to come in and kill her, and she's just going to die, right? So there's kind of pros and cons to both, but I do think that um, Corinne is going to be pretty strong, I think. Um, I think she'd be, well, because some people want to run her on lifesteal, but I don't think lifesteal is very good because you have to have her tanky enough to, like, make use of the lifesteal. Because, like, if she gets one shot with immortality, it's like, okay, she's lifesteals and gets her health bar all the way up to 100. Um... She's just going to get one shot again, right? So basically, I don't know. It's just it's whatever. Uh, but other than that, I think, yeah, I think, you know, we're looking pretty good here. Um, I'm not sure. I actually have to think about this. I'm probably going to have to build her and, and see what I can do with her. Uh, but this actually looks like a lot of fun. So I'm probably going to be um, building my Blood Blade. Uh, but yeah, other than that, Carmen Rose, who cares? Black Hand of the Goddess was is bad on a fundamental level. Um, and this is also bad on a fundamental level. So I'm just glad that they're... Um, <laughs> like this is shorter than any other than all the other like balance patches we get uh the two artifacts are useless uh that's useless this is basically half like i, I don't know i don't understand what like what this was going on here and these two are the only units that got any buffs and like we didn't get anything super special out of them they're not going to change their play style they're not going to like skyrocket in usage or anything like that but it is what it is um hopefully to some degree uh, you guys got something out of this, and uh, we'll we'll see going forward how these units turn out. Like I said, I think uh, for one, ML, ML Calric is already pretty strong in in certain people's hands. Uh, giving them these buffs are gonna we're gonna see, start seeing some crazier ones. Um, I guess in 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 some degree, I want to say that like while, yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll leave it at that. we'll leave it at that. Um, I'm not sure what. The, oh, the next video is probably gonna be finishing up the the gear video I made the first. <laughs> I, already, I made the first half, and I said I was gonna like stop and continue but I actually got distracted and went to do something else so i'll go back and, and keep crafting after that um but yeah so that's it for today